This is Tristan with Victress Games. Hello and welcome back. It's been a really long time since I made a video for the series. Don't worry, I'm still working on many different GDevelop projects, including game templates, extensions, and even a few games of my own. I won't cover any of those things in this video, so be sure to follow Victress Games on Twitter for all the juicy details. I also want to point out that you will likely notice significant differences in GDevelop between the previous video and this one. This is thanks to the hard work by the GDevelop team, continually innovating and improving this open source game engine. If you want to help GDevelop continue this legacy, please consider purchasing a GDevelop subscription or one of the bundles that GDevelop regularly participates in. Now let's get this tutorial started. Let's start by creating a title scene for our game. Let's rename this one, just call it game. Let's create a new scene. Call this one title scene. And, all right, so we got a blank scene. Let's put, obviously we're gonna need the title. Let's create a new object. Let's make it be a text object. Oh, actually let's break it up into two words. Let's say welcome to, this will be the welcome. Welcome to, and we'll choose a color, our famous gray. And let's see what this looks. Okay, that's obviously not the right size. Let's try 100. Okay, let's do welcome to, and then the game name. Let's just duplicate this one. We'll call it, uh, we'll just use the name Brackies did, Cubathon. And we'll call it, we'll make this one the, the red color. bold and let's see what this looks like i'll make it even bigger let's capitalize that we're going to need a play button uh, there's a fairly new feature in gdevelop where they let us create buttons super easy um, we'll use a panel sprite button you just go to a new object from scratch and under user interface there's panel sprite button let's just do a basic uh, gray button here Okay, double click on it. I can change the label just to say play. It'll be centered, make it bold. Let's see how it looks. If you mouse over it, it gets brighter. When you push it down, it looks like you're pushing a button. So that's pretty cool. Um, I love to put animation in my title screens. So let's make a, a moving block kind of so people understand a little bit. Something that's related to the game. It's more interesting than a boring screen like this. Uh, let's just add a square. And we'll edit in Piscal. Let's change it to the red color. Give it a name. This is actually the file name. Uh, let's give it a behavior. Let's give it a shake object. Um, shake object. This is similar to shake camera, but it's designed to shake an object. And we'll add this. Uh, okay, so if we put this on here, I'll just hold, if you hold down shift, we'll keep them so they look like squares, and then uh, control, drag, we'll make a second one, and let's shake them. And we'll just, um, what settings should we use? Let's make them go up and down and also rotate. And we'll do it kind of slow. Okay. Um, let's see, I want to do one more thing. Oh, because we're not actually doing cubes, we're going to do a, I consider a little comical wordplay. We're going to use um, now in 2D text object. Let's make it maybe like a blue color. Um, I'm gonna put a little uh, outline around those words. So that looks, all right, I like it. Um, actually, let's even make this go up and down. We can add a behavior 
Search for new behavior. Ellipse movement. This can do up and down, left and right, similar to rectangle movement, but it can also do circles. Uh, I just, let's, uh, I just want to go up and down. So let's set the X to zero, the Y, which is up and down, 100. This is gonna take six seconds. Let's make it two seconds. Let's try this. Okay, too far. Let's make it half as, move half as much. Able to move much. 30. All right. There we go. We have our title screen. Obviously, the play button doesn't do anything. Let's make that do something. Okay, we click on our gray button, and there's a nice little condition called is clicked. This is part of the uh, button behavior. So if that's clicked, let's change to the game scene. All right, let's see if this works. Play, and the game starts. I can play. Um, what else should we do? Let's add some sound effects. So let's do some, let's do when the button is hovered, let's play a sound. And then when it's pressed, we'll make, we'll play a, we'll play a sound. Okay, so play a sound. Let's just reuse something we already have, this hit obstacle. Um, and this is, let's see which one I'm working on first. First the hover. So I'm gonna do the hover um, slower than normal. So it's a, like a lower pitch. And then for the uh, pressed, um, let's make that the normal speed. So it's gonna be like a lower speed hit and then a higher speed hit. Um, for We're gonna need trigger once on these or it will play like a machine gun. And that's usually not an effect you want. Uh, is clicked, that only happens a single frame. So we don't need to do the trigger once. Let's see if the sound works. That's the low pitch sound. Let's try the, the press. So this is actually a fun way, an easy way to get multiple sound effects using a single sound. It's just by changing their pitch. Okay, now if I release it on it, it's clicked. But did you see how that was kind of a jarring instant teleport to the game? Let's make it a little nicer with a transition. There's an extension that can help with this. It's called uh, Transition uh, Flash and Transition Painter. So this is pretty neat. It can do like um, a couple different transitions, including a fade in or out. Um, what I like think I'm going to do for this one is actually a circle, like make a red circle appear in the center and, and cover the whole scene and then come back. Uh, you'll, you'll recognize this effect. Okay, so we need a shape painter for this to work. We're gonna create a shape painter object. And all we really need to do is add a behavior and it's the flash and transition painter behavior. Now it is important that you create this. Uh, the extension doesn't create this for you. So I'm just gonna create it and stick it up here. The position of this shape painter does not matter. So all we need to do is create it, give the behavior and throw it on the scene somewhere. I like to stick mine up here in the top left. Now we can do, um, if the button is clicked, let's draw that transit, that circle. Paint effect. So let's do our red color. Um, let's try one second. The type will be, so uh, flash, that's kind of mis misnamed. That's basically the fade in or fade out. Horizontal, this is like, I think like a wipe, like a, a solid bar goes across. Those are pretty cool too. Circular uh, works great. And we're gonna do forward. This means to go from basically nothing and grow from the center. That's all we need to do. Let's see if this clicks. Oh, we can't uh, change the scene immediately because we have to wait for this one second. So let's just use our weight um, action and we'll just match the weight to the paint effect type. So let's try this. Okay, that was pretty cool. I think I'd like to add that reverse so that when the game starts, it, it kind of shrinks. And to do that, we're gonna have to basically uh, copy this transition. I'm gonna make it a um, global object. When you set it as a global object, it will become available in all of your um, scenes. 
so we don't have to recreate this, for instance. Now let's go to our game, and we do have to put this transition object on the scene somewhere, so I'll just throw it up here. And we basically have to do the reverse of this um, paint effect, so I'm going to copy that, and we're going to put it in the initialize game. Let's just stick it at the bottom of this initialize game. I'm going to paste it. And instead of direction forward, we're going to do direction backward. That means start fully covered and then go away to the, towards the center. And we'll just do a little note. Circle transition. Draw a circle transition. Okay, this is the beginning of the scene. It just needs to happen once. And let's see what this looks like. If I preview it. Okay. If you, look, if you notice, it, it, it worked, but the uh, UI is still visible on top. That's because I put it on the base layer. If I move it to the UI layer, I believe it'll be on top of everything. There we go. Okay, let's test the transition from title screen to game. Okay, perfect. All right, let's do a similar thing and create the end screen. Uh, let's do what Brackies did, let's duplicate our title scene and we will call it end scene. We'll just say, thanks for playing. And we'll make this a little bigger because I think this is gonna be our primary thing. We'll move that. Oh, I hit italics. All right. Uh, the play button is now going to be the quit button. And uh, when the gray button is clicked, instead of change to scene game, let's see if we can just quit the game. So this will actually close the application if it's uh, installed. Let's make a transition that starts at the beginning of the scene. And we'll do that paint effect. And we'll do the reverse. I thought it would be fun to have um, Brackies and Victorious Games logos uh, on this end screen. So let's add those real fast. Um, let's make this one go up and down. We'll give it the ellipse movement and vertical, let's try 50, and we'll make it pretty slow. I'm gonna make that transition be a little faster. Let's make it a half second. We need the Victor's Games logo. And this one, I want to shake it. So instead of shaking this red square, let's shake the Victor's Games logo. And we're going to shake it pretty slowly. And I only want to rotate it. Let's see how that looks. Okay, that's a little insane. Let's uh, try to um, make it stop shaking and then start shaking. So to do that, you just add a condition is shaking. So if it's not shaking, then we can shake it. If, if the logo's not shaking, then shake. All right, that's probably too much shaking. Let's try this. All right kind of draws your attention to it. I'd like it so that if the users click on these logos, they go to the websites. The trick with that is these are not buttons, but we can actually add the button behavior. I'm hoping this will eventually be, you won't have to do this step, but for now, if you edit the panel sprite button, and you see this button FSM down here, it's a behavior, just click make public, and now it's available to be added to objects. Let's add that behavior to these objects. Behavior, add behavior, button, finite, state, machine. This is what gives us the is clicked, is hovered, is pressed, all those states that are really helpful. 
let's do a clicked on this one. And you're going to go to a URL. Open web page. For this, I'll send people to my uh, GD Games profile so they can play all the, see all the games that I've made and play them. You need to make sure this is has quotation marks on it. And let's do the same for um, Brackies. I'm going to send people to the playlist for Brackies game where he makes this, the game we're working on. Okay, now when people click on these buttons, they will open up a web page. That transition is not looking great. We need to get a new layer to put it on. So we will move that to the UI layer. These logos don't actually look like buttons because there's no change when you mouse over them. Let's add an outline effect so they look more like buttons. So we will add an outline effect to both. We'll choose our red again. Let's try four. And we'll do on the other, other logo. While I'm doing this, I saw there was a upcoming feature where you will be able to copy and paste these effects. Okay, so this outline is on by default, but we only want it to appear when they are hovering. Since it's both buttons are gonna have the same logic, let's create a object group. We'll call it buttons. We'll put these two logos in it. These are all button things, so we'll stick them under here. If the button group is hovered, the buttons effect, enable effect yes for hovered. Copy and paste. We'll invert the is hovered, and we'll say if it's not hovered, effect is no. So now you can mouse over these and you see that it looks like a button. Let's add the sound effect as well. Let's just copy the sound from the gray button. We'll add an event for pressed. Is pressed. I better not forget a trigger once on this. We've got a working end screen. I forgot I did want to add one last text object. Okay, we will center those. We'll use the same gray. Okay. That's good enough for this tutorial anyways. Okay, so the very last thing we need to do is send people to this end screen when the game's over. Let's do that uh, by detecting which level we're on, and if the level is past the last level, we will send them to the end scene. So we can do that right here under Initialize Game. We will check the current level, and since I only have three levels, we'll make this four. And this will send users to the scene at the end. Now, I was going to do a full video on how to publish games for GDevelop, but it's so ridiculously easy, I'm just going to tag it on at the end here. See, this is a big glowing purple button, Publish. Click that and click Generate Link. This will publish on GD Games. It's a website where your game will be available to be played by others. After you click the link, just wait a few seconds. Here's a URL you can use for the specific build that you just made, and you can test it by clicking open. You can use this URL to test the specific version that we just finished creating. But if you want a more static URL for your game, click this verify and publish to GD Games. Choose make your game discoverable. Set yourself as the author. Change any of these settings you want. You don't have to change anything. When you click save project and publish, this is now the permanent link for this game. You can share this, and if you make any updates to the game, the same link will work for any updates. It's really amazing how simple this is. Uploading to itch is not hard at all, but this is like 10 times easier than that even. It's also extremely simple to build for mobile, Android, or desktop 
which is Linux, Mac, or Windows, uh, with just a few clicks as well. So if you click here to export to other platforms, the web is what you would use for like downloading for itch or any of these any of the other similar websites that, that run HTML games. Mobile, this is for Android devices. Uh, APK is mainly just for testing. If you want to get on Google Play, you need to be you choose this AA Android app bundle option. If you click this create package for Android, in about five minutes, the GDevelop servers are going to create a package for you at, that you can install on your Android device and get it in the Google Play App Store. This is a service provided by GDevelop, and how many builds you have is based off of your subscription you have with GDevelop. You do get some builds for free, which is really nice, but if you want to support this project and get more builds, uh, you would want to buy a subscription. To build for desktop is basically the same process. You choose which operating systems you want and click package, and you'll get an exe file for instance, for Windows, and you have a game that you can install. You can use these desktop installers for app stores like Steam. That's really all it takes to publish your game in a variety of ways. Thank you so much for getting to the end of this tutorial series. I've had a lot of fun making this, and I think I've had so much good feedback from everybody about how much this has helped people get started on their GDevelop game dev journey. I know that I used YouTube videos similar to this to get to where I am today, and so it feels good to give back. I hope you'll keep watching and stay tuned for future videos. My next series is going to be about how to make a tower defense game. If you want to see what I'm working on, make sure you follow me at Victorious Games on Twitter. I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.